Harvesting the Great Plains, the show bringing you news about discipleship building across Kansas and Nebraska. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. That's why here in the Great Plains, we're not just focused on building up a healthy harvest, we're also focusing on enriching the workers, those out in the fields doing the Lord's work. I'm Jana McFarland, your host, and we have a great lineup for you today. First up, the Reverend Kalaba Chali, coordinator of Mercy and Justice for the Great Plains, will fill us in on the theme for this year, Seek Justice. Then Shane Warda, lay leadership coordinator, will tell us about fresh expressions, a rather unconventional take on starting new churches. Finally, Todd Seifert, conference director of communications, will tell us about a special celebration at the annual UMW celebration back in September. First up, let's talk to Charlie. Thanks for joining us, Charlie. Thank you, thank you for having me. Now, the theme for this year for our annual conference and our commission from the bishop is mm -hmm. Seek Justice. Now, what does Seek Justice mean to us as individual Christians? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question. So, Seek Justice for us, United Methodist, you know, uh, our theology is kind of based on uh, personal holiness and social holiness. Personal holiness, we kind of look at the ways we grow in our own discipleship like reading the Bible and uh, sharing the, uh, the gospel with others. And then when we talk about social holiness, we are looking at how can we engage our community collectively with others so that we can transform the world. Uh, similar to the story of the Good Samaritan we find in the Bible, so that there is a more uh, communal engagement to transform the world uh, through the love of Christ. So we're taking that personal holiness that we have been building and working on into mm -hmm. our communities, working together. So how do you see us doing that uh, maybe in our churches? That's, that's, a, good, that's a good point there. Uh, so the work of justice is much, it's, it's bigger. Uh, one person alone I cannot do all the work. In fact, Jesus himself, when he came, uh, he recruited a team and then each of the team members went and recruited their own uh, disciples, so to speak. And so we are commissioning our churches to not just do the work alone, but to work col uh, col uh, collectively with other churches, but also with different organizations in our communities. Uh, there are communities like uh, Justice Matters in Lawrence, or OTAC, Omaha, together one community in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, where churches rally and work with others, even other, uh, in the ecumenical movement, other churches. So it's a work that we are called to do together in churches, but also in community organizing uh, in our communities. So are you seeing then our churches working with their networks on seeking justice? That's correct. And some churches have already been working in their networks uh, for a while now. Uh, some churches, particularly smaller churches, they, they, they really get the point of working together. Uh, you'll see churches working together in uh, providing youth ministries, uh, churches working together in uh, addressing poverty in their community. Uh, but these other organizations we are working with, uh, gives our, they give our churches tools and a platform in where to mobilize a collective power to transform uh, the world, uh, whether it's addressing mental illness, like in Lawrence, or whether it's just addressing poverty through uh, providing fresh food, uh, like we see in Omaha community. So in our smaller churches, I know their communities really rely on those churches to provide mm -hmm. those ministries, maybe those those hunger outreaches, um, but it's also really inspiring to think of our churches and our larger communities pairing up with local organizations, mm -hmm. you know, joining uh, where God is already doing the work and adding exactly. that extra power behind that. Um, how do you see some of our larger churches playing out with the, the Seeking Justice this year? Yeah, so Seeking Justice uh, through our large churches, uh, particularly those in urban centers, uh, they work together, I mean, in, in Topeka, for instance, there is Topeka Jump, where uh, First Church or Countryside, UMC, they work together with other churches to mobilize whether it's addressing the issue of uh, transportation. Uh, th there is something about numbers uh, that uh, when we come together, address, uh, address a common issue that affects our people in the community, 
that is part of the role of the church uh, to mobilize the number and, and, and identify common issue together, being transportation or poverty or mental illness, and begin to address that and tracking the progress that is being made so that the system itself is being addressed and the root causes. Uh, our churches are really good about providing uh, uh, what do I call mercy services, uh, you know, uh, stopping the bleeding when someone is hurt. But when we come together, we can mobilize enough power to make changes, uh, bring changes to our, our city, uh, bring changes to our county, and, uh, and address much bigger issues together. So it shows, I think, when we work on these ecumenical movements, such mm -hmm. as Topeka Jump mm -hmm. or, or other community organizations, that uh, this isn't just a United Methodist issue we are addressing, maybe not even a Christian issue, but mm -hmm. so many people believe in this cause that they are banding together, and it really could make a difference in our community. Exactly. That will make a huge difference in our community. For instance, transportation. Mm -hmm. uh, transportation concerns all the people. It's not Christians, it's not non-Christians. And so when we address that, you know, we can, you know, individual churches can give some, uh, some voucher to people, but those people keep coming back. But when we come together, we say, how can we uh, help our cities uh, when they plan budget to include uh, transportation as a systemic issue? Where, by the way, when people have transportation, better transportation system, they go to work, they pay taxes, that even helps our city governments. The same thing with mental illness. Uh, we can't just put people in jail, uh, but when we provide a facility through you know, our budgeting uh, process of cities or counties, then we, bring, we restore people back in the community. They go back to work, and in turns they pay taxes, and our community, our communities will flourish because of that collective impact. And the church is right in the center of that, mobilizing these uh, different entities to make a positive change. So we are helping our communities to see the much larger picture of these issues. Mm -hmm. Something like transportation and getting people to work isn't just good for the individual, but this is good for the whole community. And I really like that we're thinking that way. And it, it, it means a lot that Christians are pushing these issues. Mm -hmm. I've always thought since we have the Holy Spirit on our side, we really should be the ones innovating and, and coming up exactly. with these new ideas and new movements. Yeah. How is the conference supporting our networks, our churches? Um, what, what do you have to offer us to help us at, in our seeking justice? Well, through Congregational Excellence and the Mercy and Justice, we are, uh, we are providing training. So, for instance, in January, uh, uh, January 18. We will do a webinar to help churches and individuals learn how to engage in community organizing. But we are also giving small grants uh, to allow people to get started on doing something. So we are doing training, but we are also providing resources uh, so that churches can, uh, can get out and do what they love to do best to engage in their communities and transform the community through the love of Christ. And thanks to our bishop and the vision of uh, 2020, Seek Justice, that's where all our churches and uh, our programs are focusing on uh, seeking justice together, not individually, but as a collective uh, unit. So you're providing training mm -hmm. and resources. There really isn't a reason why a church couldn't jump on board and, and seek justice in a much power, more powerful way in 2020. Um, what can they expect, though, if they sign up for this webinar, for instance? Well, uh, there will be some, uh, we, we, we are not only bringing people from far away, we are also lifting up people who are already doing this kind of work in our own communities. For instance, with uh, Omaha Together One Community, or Talk, or Justice Matters in Lawrence, or Topeka Jump. So we will bring some of the uh, justice seekers in these organizations so they share stories from our own communities, so from our own context. And, and so if you sign on, uh, if you uh, register for those uh, events we are planning and the training, you will learn more about our own communities and what works and what's not working. And so there will be some more practical uh, ways to engage in justice. Certainly by sharing our successes that could energize us and help us in, uh, to find inspiration for the next thing that might happen in our local churches. Yeah. Um, I, how would someone find out more information if they are interested in this webinar? 
if you're interested, I think there will be more communication through the GP Connect. There will okay. be some Facebook uh, post in our Great Plains Conference. Uh, I just will encourage you to keep uh, stay tuned, uh, follow the stories uh, of your conference and your churches and your districts. Uh, this is a great time in the life of the church in our conference. I'm speaking specifically. The Holy Spirit is moving, uh, bringing us all together to transform our community so that we can see the people of God flourishing through the love of God. So don't wait for that webinar. I mean, please sign up for the webinar, exactly. but definitely <laughs> the Holy Spirit is moving. Get on board now. How about a grant? How can someone apply for a grant? So on the Great Plains Conference, uh, if you just go under uh, Serve with Others grants, you'll see there there are a variety of grants. Uh, one of them could be uh, uh, how to engage with your, so, uh, with your school in your community or Social Justice Seed Money, which is a small grant to get you started. Or even uh, the, the, the other grant we, we started recently uh, for LGBTQ plus leaders, uh, raising leaders in the church. There is a grant for that. We voted at annual conference. So there are a variety of grants to get you started to do what God has called you to do. Excellent. Serving with others grants on our website. And any church can apply for those. Exactly. That's excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Charlie. Thank you so much for having me. Coming up next, Shane Warda has news about Fresh Expressions. Stay better connected to the Great Plains Conference and track success with your spiritual disciplines by downloading and using our new app. Our primary social media channels appear on the home page of our app. Need a daily devotion? Look no further than our link to the upper room right on the home screen of our app. Our communications staff will keep you up to date on the latest stories from within the conference and beyond Kansas and Nebraska. And we'll help you stay on track with your spiritual disciplines with our spiritual fitness tracker. Each time you complete one of the five disciplines, we help you measure on the app. You just click a button to get a point. To help you stay healthy, we even have a fitness tracker that allows you to record your time taking part in aerobic activity, strength training, or even counting your daily steps. Our new app will even help you track some of the foods you eat to help you maintain a balanced diet. You can measure how well you're doing spiritually, in exercise, and with your diet by checking your progress by week or month. All of this, plus access to conference videos, photos, blogs, news, and more, available at your fingertips on your iPhone or Android, or on any tablet. Download the new Great Plains Conference app today. Welcome back to Harvesting the Great Plains. We have Shane Warda here, coordinator of Lay Leadership Development Correct. for the Great Plains Conference. Well, thanks for joining us, Shane. Thanks now, for you're here me. to talk about um, fresh expressions. Um, but I don't really know. What is a fresh expression? <laughs> a fresh expression is a, a ministry of, of the church to reach new people. Um, it's looking at how our culture is changing, it's looking at how we um, look at people in our community that might not be in church or who may be done with church. And, and looking at where are they spending their time, what are their interests, and how can we. Uh, be the church outside of the church. And so it's truly a sp uh, movement of the Holy Spirit and, and, and it's really kind of this community evangelistic effort for the 21st century. Um, it's a relevant way to meet new people. Um, it's for anybody, um, any age, demographic, community, um, and it's really beginning to stretch, um, stretch the ministry of the church outside the walls of the church. So this is different than just doing ministry as we typically think of it in a church on Sunday mornings. Is that correct? Correct. Yeah, there, there is more intentionality behind what is called the third place. And so the third place is those places outside of um, homeschool and work that we um, convene, that we frequent. Um, and a lot of times that's where people are gathering or passing by. And so how can we uh, be present? How can we meet people where they're at to... Um, ultimately build a relationship with them, get to know them, um, just be, um, be friendly with them, but then also 
uh, to be a representation of the church out in the community. And so we're seeing this um, in every single context, whether rural, um, urban, in different settings, um, and even de demographics as far as age. It's not, um, it's not just a, a millennial movement or a, a movement of, of young people, uh, but it's, it's people who really are kind of social entrepreneurs um, they're connected within their communities, and, and it's something that they just do naturally, where they represent the body of Christ um, in their communities, and they're, they're pointing them towards the, our churches um, for spiritual development and worship and prayer and communion there. Right. I really like the idea of that third place. We all have those third places, mm -hmm. and finding out where those are for the people in our community and meeting them there, uh, I think that could make a, a really big difference in some of our communities. Have we seen some fresh expressions played out uh, across the conference already? Yeah, so we've been, we've been um, the initiative of fresh expressions has been taking place in our conference for about a year. Um, as of today, we see about 20 fresh expressions uh, taking place in a vast majority of our districts. Um, we see fresh expressions popping up in places such as uh, laundry mats, uh, local diners, coffee shops. Uh, even pubs and breweries. Um, and then I also heard about a new one in a salon. I just now remembered where uh, ladies are, are meeting together on Wednesday mornings to get their hair um, done and fixed whatever way they want to. I don't know what that's like. but <laughs> the, And then they're having a time of devotion and a time of community and just being the church in that setting. The church in the salon, in <laughs> <Yeah>. the laundromat. <laughs> salon, saloon, what, you know, either place. <laughs> saloon. Yeah, but, but where people are, where they spend their time, those places they where we naturally connect with each other. Yeah. I love that idea. So who's the driving force behind a fresh expression? Yeah, we've seen it happen a couple different ways. Uh, we've seen some of our pastors bravely step out in their communities and, and be pioneers themselves. Ultimately, um, they are the permission givers where they are encouraging the laity, um, the people within their church to um, look at their community and their needs and, and be present there. Um, we're also seeing some, some laity who are just already connected within their schools, their businesses, uh, local cities um, to, to, to be able to do the, the ministry of the church there. And so uh, we haven't seen any like specific trends on like who it actually is, but there's a role for everyone within this um, and, and how the language is used within Fresh Expressions. You have permission givers, you have pioneers who kind of are your social entrepreneurs out in front able to, to really see uh, the eyes of this ministry. And then you also have supporters as well. There might be some people who are saying, this ministry maybe isn't for me, but you have my prayers, you have my, um, my, my backing financially, um, spiritually, and I will support you in this endeavor. So what are some examples of how this might be working in, say, a laundromat or a salon? <laughs> yeah, so for example, um, uh, there's a laundromat ministry um, in, in Fredonia, uh, Kansas, southeast Kansas, and, and they show up at the local laundry mat on the first and third Wednesday of each month and they hand out quarters and detergent and that just really being an icebreaker for them to really say this is who we are um, this is what we're here to do we want we want to serve you but more so than just give a handout they want to give them a hand up by having a conversation getting to know their needs praying for them uh, leading a, a time of devotion and then you know letting them know that they will be there regularly um, if they want to continue to have conversation at that time or uh, letting them know about worship um, and, and getting them connected to the church if they feel like that might be a next best step. Sounds like there's a lot of really creative ideas out there. Mm -hmm. um, what if I had an idea for express, a fresh expression? What should I do? I would say go and do it, Jaina. Just, just <laughs> step out in boldness, follow the Spirit, um, bring others alongside you in prayer um, and even to be with you. And so there's really no... Um, holdbacks on, on this type of ministry. It, it's really just uh, being intentional with, with our everyday lives and who we come across um, with. And so uh, obviously there would be an opportunity for um, you to let the church know maybe about what you're looking to do to try to help them um, share with other people that they may be connected with to, to let them know about um, the fresh expression that, that church happening. Uh, and then also uh, the, there's the opportunity to, for our conference to come alongside and support them, whether that's through uh, grant money to help kind of launch the fresh expression, um, and then also even training and resources, whether upcoming or past trainings that we have that we can give as a resource. Um, and then really our, our team as Congregational Excellence is, is our supporters, and we're kind of helping 
uh, those who are doing the ministry, we're coaching them and helping um, support them in ways that we already have available or in new ways that we can think of. And so the creative spirit is in you. Uh, we ask that people step out boldly and then when the time is right to bring us alongside you to support and, and further your endeavor. So really, I could be looking at my great idea as maybe the movement of the Holy Spirit to mm -hmm. just jump in, get involved, and, and maybe bring some, my church along with me. I don't have to wait for my pastor to say, go with my blessing and do this. I can just do it. Right, exactly. And, and it's a ministry where it's, it's, it's relational, it's, it's being yourself, it's connecting to those that, that you cross paths with. Um, the, the grant money that we have available, um, that's... That, that can be used to you know, publicize your fresh expression, uh, but really we've seen it used in ways to support the third places or the businesses in which the fresh expressions are taking place. So for example, a dinner church had just recently started and it's happening on a Sunday night after five o'clock when the local diner is normally closed. And so they're using the grant money to, um, to pay the staff to, to cook the meal, to provide the meal, and to stay through and to help serve. And so it's a neat opportunity to, to support that business, to stimulate a little bit, and to, and to show you know, our love to them financially. And then for them to also hopefully be a part of it and to see uh, the movement of the Spirit kind of come to, um, to full, full effect there in that, in that moment where people come and gather. Sure, it really does support the community in a much bigger way than just providing a place to meet and have a devotion, but I'm sure that makes an impact on those workers at the diner, or on those local businesses mm -hmm. who um, have the benefit of us using their spaces. I know that probably means a lot to some of those smaller businesses. Yeah, and it's a, it's a neat opportunity for you know us as, as children of God to use our gifts and talents and graces within that, that expression of church too. A lot of times with dinner church we've seen um, you know, maybe a local artist, you know, contributes some music um, that maybe gives them an opportunity that maybe they're already providing uh, that, that gift um, within Sunday morning worship, but to be able to do it maybe in a new setting or to, for new people to, to see that and to hear that. And so we've seen that incorporated into um, even lake churches where churches gathered at a, at a time during the week out at the lake where, where people are invited that are maybe frequently, frequently in the, the lake there and, and, and showing up and, and being able to sh share those gifts there. Well, sure. I mean, sometimes it, I'm sure it feels to people who maybe are unchurched that the church is telling them to change who they are mm -hmm. or doesn't care about the things that they care about or are good at, maybe an artist or, or a musician in the community. But really, this is a chance to show them, no, God, God does want to meet you where you are. Your gifts are given to you by God, and, and we can use them in the church, and we celebrate them. Mm -hmm. um, what an impact that has on the community. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. It's an exciting, it's exciting way to really be the hands and feet of Jesus and, and, and to really be image bearers within our within our communities, within our um, locales and where we, we cross paths with other people. Now you mentioned before that the conference has maybe some opportunities for training coming up. Um, what might those be? Yeah, so we have two upcoming trainings, one in uh, Grand Island, Nebraska on Friday, November 8th and Saturday, November 9th, and it's called the Pioneer Learning Communities. Uh, so this is training done by Fresh Expressions for those who are pioneering and launching Fresh Expressions to give them training and coaching. And then our conference is hosting a clergy and lay course on what is Fresh Expressions and the roles within Fresh Expressions on Saturday, December 7th in Hasty, Nebraska. And then we also have all of the recordings captured uh, from previous trainings that um, you can call the conference office and, and ask the Congregational Excellence team for that video and the materials. And so if you're interested in the Pioneer Learning Community, um, that reg the registration is on freshexpressionsus.org. If you're interested in the clergy and lay course in Hastings, Nebraska, uh, the registration is on Great Plains website. And then if you want any resources that you've maybe missed, uh, call the conference office and talk to someone within Congregational Excellence. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Shane. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Next up, Todd Seifert brings us a story about a special celebration at the UMW annual meeting. Hello everyone, it's that time of year again. Optional benefits, open enrollment 2020. This year we are gonna do it a little different. We're gonna have it as a passive enrollment, which means two things. 
less work for you. All you have to do is watch for your mail, get your benefit statement. If you like what you have, sign it, send it to your district AA and myself. If you want to change benefits, you will get an email from ADP. That is how you go into ADP and change your benefits and change dependents if you so choose. If you have never been in any optional benefits prior, you will want to contact me direct at 785-272-9111 and I will set you up in ADP and walk you through the process. You can, as always, our elections and optional benefits are online at the Great Plains Conference website and you can review those and the cost. Thank you and as always, I'm here for you. Welcome back to Harvesting the Great Plains. Todd Seifert, Director of Communications, now has a wonderful story to share from the annual meeting of the Great Plains UMW. Todd? Thank you, Jana. The United Methodist Women is celebrating 150 years of mission and service for women, children, and youth. A ministry that started as a means of providing medical care to women in India who had limited access to doctors now provides numerous opportunities to serve in mission at home and around the world. I had the opportunity to spend a day with the UMW officers of the Great Plains Conference at the conference's annual meeting in late September in Lincoln, Nebraska. I found a group proud of their heritage, but very much focused on the future to help even more people. This event is the United Methodist Women Conference Annual Meeting. We have them uh, every year uh, in the fall, usually in September. And uh, it's important because the conference officers uh, we train the district officers, and then we have a special speaker uh, communion, and then tomorrow we'll have our business meeting followed by uh, some workshops, um, immigration, child advocacy, um, things that are uh, important in, in society. We are celebrating the 150th anniversary of the first predecessor organization of United Methodist Women. So it's kind of a, a combination of our regular annual meeting and a birthday celebration. United Methodist Women is a community of women and uh, we learn to know God and uh, the people of the world. It's helped me to grow very much personally. I've learned so much about the world around us, uh, about immigration, about uh, the rights of women, about gender equality, and um, just the plight of people in Africa and Haiti and Mexico and just all around us. It has just been very enlightening to me just learning about the people of our world outside of Gibbon, Nebraska. Do you realize that we have 800,000 women around 80 different countries that are participating in United Methodist Women and we are the largest faith-based organization that serves missions for women, children, and youth around the world. We right now support 98 national mission institutions throughout the country. Some of them are celebrating their 100th, their 100th and 20th anniversaries themselves right now. And we continue to support them. Not only does the national office provide financial support to them and even own the property that many of these agencies are on and help maintain that, but also, of course, the local units and districts and conferences that they are in provide additional support and volunteer support. I grew up in a little church in Orchard and when I was born it was a United Brethren Church when I was baptized. And then when I joined the church it was an Evangelical United Brethren Church and now it's a United Methodist Church and I've never left the building. So it's that connection and that legacy that makes it interesting for me to know that my mother and my grandmother were we're part of this legacy and we're the same as we are today. So United Methodists do mission not only uh, worldwide but also in our communities. Mm -hmm. And so part of that is that hands-on mission experience of what's affecting you right in your neighborhood. So that's a big piece of it. Uh, United Methodist women are dual focused. We go to the scripture and we find out why we should do it. 
it changes our heart. Mm -hmm. It makes us want to reach out and be hands-on and participate. It's part of the justice work that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, not only doing for the here and now, but changing, changing the systems, changing things so that our whole world can be a better place for everyone. Joy as we think through what mission has become in the last 50 years. We're not your grandmother's UMW anymore, but without your grandmother's UMW, we wouldn't be here. So there needs to be new ways. It needs to be new ways of women getting together, caring about each other, loving each other, and serving in missions. And that we can still do, whether we do it through social network or whether we do it in meetings and however we can get together. Because it's a time to change and my goodness what we can do for missions. In my experience with UMW, wherever there is a need, they are always willing and able to stretch themselves and, and continue to improve their mission so that they can reach all people and spread God's love. I think that we do some things that there aren't any other groups that really ad address. We are focused on being in mission to women, children, and youth all over the world. And in some regards, we are a little bit different in, in that respect than other mission organizations. United Methodist Women has been around for 150 years now. We're celebrating our anniversary and it has always been organized for mission. Since our foremothers first began the organization, the whole purpose was to do God's mission. And so we are all about putting uh, our members into positions and training them so that they can put their faith, hope, and love into action. The Legacy Fund Endowment Campaign is a permanently invested endowment that will support our work in the future. And so uh, the most important thing to give to first, we always tell our members, is our, your, your pledge to mission. Your mission giving needs to come first because that's what supports the work we do right now. But the Legacy Fund is very much looking toward the future. The endowment campaign has been, uh, at, we actually are at $28 million now. Um, we hope to get it fully funded at 60 million. We certainly are looking toward the future. Even though the, the church is going through some difficult times right now, we know as United Methodist Women, our mission and our purpose will remain the same. And we, will, we want to do the same work in the next 150 years that we've done in the past 150 years. Thank you, Todd, for that wonderful story. That really was inspiring. Well, thank you for joining us at Harvesting the Great Plains. Join us again next month. See you next time. This health boost is brought to you by the Abundant Health Initiative of the United Methodist Church. Get up, get ready. It's time for a health boost. Let's unite to boost our holistic well-being. Improve your flexibility, posture, and even your mood with this two-minute standing stretch. Okay, let's begin standing tall. Take a deep cleansing breath. First up, shoulder rolls. Roll your shoulders forward in full circles, loosening up any tension you're storing there. And now roll them in the opposite direction. Great! Next, head tilts. Face straight ahead and relax your shoulders. Tilt your head to your left, drawing your ear down to meet your shoulder. You should feel a nice stretch in the right side of your neck. Great! Now release and return your head to center. And let's tilt to the other side. A slow and controlled motion, nice stretch in the left side of your neck. Perfect. Next is up-down stretch. Reach both arms overhead, stretching towards the sky, spreading your fingers wide. 
Then bend at the waist and sweep your arms down to your toes, rounding your spine. Keep a slight bend in your knees to support your lower back. Looking good. Return to standing position for side stretch. Face forward and reach your left arm up high. Then from the waist, tilt your torso over to the right. Keep your feet and hips stable as you stay active in that left arm, reaching over your head. Great, now release, come back to center, and let's switch sides. Reach that right arm up and over as you tilt your torso to the left. Now the final stretch, arm cross stretch. Reach your left arm forward and cross it over your chest, keeping it straight. Use your right hand to hug that left arm close to your chest and try to relax that left shoulder down, away from your ear. You should feel a nice stretch in that left shoulder blade. Good. Now release and let's do the same thing on the other side. Extend your right arm forward and cross it over your chest. Use that left hand to support it. Nice work. You've enriched your physical wellness today by stretching and focusing on your health. Join us in creating abundant health for everyone. Learn more at umcabundanthealth.org.